Hello, welcome, and welcome back to the United Mates Football Podcast. Today, as ever, I'm joined by my co-host, Joe, and we are both very excited for this episode. We're bringing back some featured music at the end of the show, and this time that's courtesy of Earth to Eve with her brilliant single, Insomnia, so stick around for that. And as usual, we have a special guest on the pod with us as well. Like myself these days, he's a fellow West Coaster. More importantly, he's a fellow Gooner too. Back in 2011, he won Food Network's The Great Food Truck Race with The Lime Truck, and currently he's one of the chefs behind Playground DTSA, a restaurant that in his own words is a very difficult restaurant to explain. <laughs> <laughs> essentially, what I gathered is that there are times that there's nothing on the menu actually at all, but essentially there's never times where anything is ever off the menu at Playground in Santa Ana. As for its extended bakery, Dough Exchange, our guest is also responsible for some of the best bagels in Southern California. So welcome to the United Mates Football Podcast, Jason Quinn. We're thrilled to have you with us. It's a real pleasure. How are you doing today? Uh, this is this is my fourth podcast. I've done Star Wars podcast. I've done uh, food podcast. But of course, I get to talk about my true love, uh, which is the proper game of football and the best club in the world, uh, the Mighty Arsenal. <laughs> Well, somebody might not agree with the the, the Arsenal stuff. <laughs> uh, it's Joe, so yeah, jump on in. Yeah, well, hi Jason, it's Joe here, I and mean, it's a it's a pleasure to have you um, as a guest. I'm, I apologise that you have to speak to a Spurs fan, but I imagine it's a good time to catch you, given Arsenal have just um, beaten Newcastle in the FA Cup. So at, the, at least um, you and Kaitel um, are happy for the time being. But um, yeah, I was going to find myself slightly ill if uh, if we had uh, if we had managed to capitulate there. Uh, with, I mean, with the starting lineup, it looked like that was our plan. I mean, I, I should say with the real starting lineup with Martinelli, it looked like, of course, we were going to do well. And then uh, with that last minute swap to Nelson, it was basically the out of form 11 for Arsenal that started the game today. Yeah, no, that is, um, that's, that's very true. And yeah, I'm sure we're going to, we're going to get stuck into that game in a bit. But Jason, uh, we always start our podcast with a little icebreaker for our guests and, um, and what we've said, well, what we know about you, obviously, Jason, is you used to work on the lime truck and you're currently, as Kaitel said, working in Orange County. But we also know that you have a big sweet tooth. Um, so what we um, what we would like to know is what is your favorite sour candy or sour sweet? Oh, man, oh, man. That's, a, that's actually a, a stellar question. Uh, I would say it's it's mood derivative for sure, or I guess I say how marijuana and, and, and uh, <laughs> how much I have in my body at the time, uh, <laughs> how under the influence I am when I when I choose said sweet. But uh, there are very few sour gummies I, I I shy away from. I would say the most standard ones are like a, a good old classic peach ring, apple ring. That's a great candy. But um, you know I'm always on the look for uh, a little bit more uh, rare and obscure ones. There's a candy company out here called uh, Sugar Fina. And they have some like unbelievable ones. They're so bougie. You know, you're paying like $8 for this little <laughs> square box. But um, yeah, no, I, I appreciate the question. I don't think I have a good enough answer. Oh, well, no, you've, you've given us a few names, which is great. Yeah. And I, one I used to like quite, I used to like Warheads a lot, which is a bit of a oh, yeah. great Warheads, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was always good fun. But how about you, Kai? Um, are you a fan of sour sweets? I, on the sort of like Warhead train, I think um, Toxic Waste is just an alternative and it comes in like a little plastic like um chemical waste barrel it's supposed to be like, a sign of how i guess unnatural they are for one but they definitely yeah. are pretty pretty sour um yeah sugar fina actually i won't speak too loudly but my upstairs neighbor is a manager at a, at a sugar fina oh, cool, and he, cool. he has on occasion told me that if i ever want a bunch of expired candy i can just knock on his door so <laughs> I'll have to, yeah, I'll, okay, so, i was gonna say uh, i'll yeah, extend that invitation yeah yeah we had a candy when i was a kid here called raven's revenge and it was it came in a little vial and it was just this powder it was just it was just sour powder and you would just like put some on your tongue and just immediate just kind of like too sour but yeah that was the that was the memory of this this uh sludge thing or whatever that you were saying mm -hmm. that uh toxic waste or that, that that was what brought me back to that yeah no there was even one that was like a little bit of um i don't know you, you kind of had to do it yourself you'd like lick the lollipop and then like dip it in the in the oh, sour dip. stuff um, fun dip. Yeah, as we fun dip, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah well that was a fun trip down, I guess. Yeah, memory lane as far as, as candy or, or sweets, as, as we'd say back in England. But moving on to um, some more personal questions for you, Jason. I read that iconic chef slash TV chef Emeril Lagasse was the person who inspired you to begin cooking. And otherwise, you've been heavily influenced along the way by restaurateurs like David Chang. But when it comes to football and Arsenal, who are those inspirational figures and where does that love come from? How did you end up an Arsenal fan? It's a great question. It's, uh, obviously, obviously, anyone who meets me is kind of overwhelmed by how into it I am. 
Uh, my wife says I'm a couple steps beyond diehard. And, um, you know, really, I, I hate American sports. I, I find there to be no order. I hate this argument that uh, there's not the same strength of schedule for each team. You know, how can you play 182 games and not play everyone the same amount of times? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And if you do play that many, why do we need playoffs? And, you know, anyone can beat anyone on a given day, you know, but of course, I love the structure of the Premier League. And, and I found the structure of the Premier League uh, in, in December of 2005. I was um, in the summer, uh, you know, before we went to college, my friends would get along, we'd play FIFA in the garage. And, um, you know, I was blown away when every, every one of my friends, oh, I want to play with Inter Milan. I want to play with Chelsea. I'm like, how do you, where are you seeing this stuff? Like, where, where is this on TV to the point that you're following it? How do you, how do you know who these people are, you know? And um, it really wasn't televised that well here. I mean, ESPN Classic was like, you know, they would show some matches, but it wasn't consistent. It wasn't like you could turn it on every Saturday at three at, you know, 7 a.m. and you'd catch a match. Um, and then we had a channel called uh, Fox Soccer Channel that, that came out. And um, it was like uh, right around Boxing Day in 2005. Uh, I don't think it was Boxing Day, but it might have been right before. Uh, my friend texts me, goes, hey, turn on, you know, channel 719 right now. First match I turned on was uh, Arsenal Aston Villa. It actually ended up as a nil nil draw. It was it wasn't a particularly exciting game. It was like Milan Baros almost scored, and and so did Henri. And um, and right after that match, uh, it showed the table: Chelsea, United, Liverpool, and then from fourth to ninth, teams like Fulham, Blackburn, Wigan, Bolton, you know, Spurs, Arsenal. That was that group. You know, four to nine. And I said, you know, the, the top three are kind of already so far ahead. Uh, and, and I have no family ties to England. At the time, I had never been to England. How do you pick a team? You know, like, I didn't feel like I could just go, I'll take that one. Uh, so I left that to chance. I said, I'm going to watch the rest of the season. And whoever finishes on top of this pile is going to be my team. You know, so May 7th. Uh, 2006, Arsenal at home to Wigan Athletic. Last day, last day at Highbury. Of course, Thierry Henry with his hat trick, kissing the grass, like you know, just just insane moments. And then, uh, how much do we talk about Lasagna Gate around here at all, or do we mention it? I don't know what the. I think given your given your chef background and and uh, the rest of us on this call, yeah, why not get into it? <laughs> yeah, so uh, of course, you know, like I was there, I poisoned the team. Uh, <laughs> you do. It all makes sense now. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so of course, um, you know, match the, you know, that's what I tell people always is that on the final day, you know, the games are going at the same time. So, you know, they finish two one to West Ham. Uh, you know, across town. And then, of course, 4-2 to the Mighty Gunners. And that was, you know, 10 years in a row finishing on top of Spurs. And um, that was it. That was like, you know, okay, fourth place, that, that's my team. And literally seconds after that, I got a call from my mom and uh, my grandfather had passed away right then. You know, that's when he died. And, um, you know, I had a great love for my grandfather. It was like the first person in my life that I lost. And basically I had this new thing and this gaping hole and it kind of just continued on you know and um so i mean i my son's name is canon um you know my my i was my i talked to my wife i was i was eligible uh to to buy one of these thierry Henry invincible rolexes they only made 49 of them number 37 of 49 became available to me i i fucking made it happen i bought it you know oh, yeah. like, like so you know the type of thing that like it just has taken over you know and of course really if you think about it my first game as an arsenal fan do you remember what it was the champions league heartbreak champions league final that's the first yeah. that's the first game as that's a, a like, true taste of not arsenal hood is to be disappointed off the bat essentially yeah you know um so so but it, but it's so funny too to have your mentality if that's your first game thinking like oh, okay like we'll have plenty of these you know like that's that that thing and and it's like to sit there and think that Spurs would have been back at that match before us. I don't think I would have ever uh, believed that. Of course, uh, we at least had some minutes where it was possible for us to have won. Uh, and of course, in the Spurs one, I don't think there was even 90 seconds that that was possible. Uh, I have this I have this like joy that I think about that there was like a Spurs fan spent like 10,000 pounds to go to Champions League final, got a round of beers and walked down at 1-0 and like <laughs> never even got to see 
anything besides one nil or two nil, you know, like I, I, I unfortunately love thinking about that. I, I, Joe, you seem like a really nice guy. I hate, I hate looking at you as I'm, as I'm discussing this stuff, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, uh, that was, that was how I became an Arsenal fan and believe it or not, since then I have actually not missed one game. Jealous. So per- a perfect streak, um, which has had some incredibly wild, last minute flight changes and driving through the night and stuff to actually make sure that I don't miss games. Uh, and my wife, believe it or not, we went to uh, Europe for a month and we went to London five times. We didn't go to London. We went to Europe and we kept flying back every weekend uh, to catch games. And of course, when, when would have been the worst time to have been an Arsenal fan book five matches that you think you're going to win the title 2016 in April when, when uh, I imagine for some of that time, you also thought you were going to lift the Premier League trophy there, Joe, uh, yeah, until yeah. somehow yeah. finished third in a two-horse race on the That's last one for you, you know, where they, yeah. they, they, they manage these things somehow. <laughs> Are you optimistic about this year? Yeah. Is this, is this end the trophy crowd? Yeah, to some extent, I'm optimistic. I mean, a few uh, about a month or so ago, I was very optimistic, but, you know, <laughs> very um, it's a very tight league. It feels like almost... You win a couple of games and suddenly you're in with a shout. So um, I think it's hard not to. You, I think I'm definitely not pessimistic, but it seems so open. I mean, yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't want to call it. it what's a, what's a success for Tottenham this year? What's what's a great year? A great year. Well, f- tr- we have to win a trophy firstly, so we're in yeah. the final now. So that's great. Um, if you offered me now, and I'm being a bit pessimist, but if you gave me top four and that trophy, I would probably take it at this point i mean you know you know jose Mourinho would have fulfilled his legacy of winning silverware wherever he goes you would have been back in the top four it's hard to imagine a a better season for spurs really i mean it would have been a massive upgrade on on last season and uh, do you do you actually like Mourinho? i'm always yeah i always ask this um i look i i don't love him but i respect him a lot and i he's, he's starting to win me over i don't necessarily like the football we always play, but you know the ends justify the means, as they say. And I'm yeah. behind him. I'm, I'm in it. I'm in the Mourinho bus at the moment, but we'll see. Yeah, I will tell you that I've I've actually had a, an incredibly fruitful year um, betting against Arsenal because I, uh, I I was I simply take it too bad when we lose. I, I take it too poorly, and uh, I am just I've realized I'm just happy to pay for wins, and I'm I'm happy to buy them, and I'm happy to be. I'll tell you what. When Aubameyang scores an own goal and you lose one nil to Burnley, the only thing that makes that feel better is five hundred and fifty-five dollars of free money because you were smart enough to know that your team is a fucking botch job, you know. So, um, you know, I, 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 and I and believe it or not, I didn't bet against Newcastle today. I didn't bet against Brighton, and I didn't bet uh, against West Brom. So I'm feeling incredible. I got four wins, and it only cost me two hundred bucks for the Chelsea win. <laughs> Now that um, that sounds pretty good, actually. Um, I, maybe I need to start betting um, against Tottenham. To, um, you well, know. I'll tell you what. I started, well, again, in the North London Derby, not only did I bet 200 on Spurs to win, but I put 100 on Kane to score and 100 on Son to score. And I felt like a very smart individual when I got when I got paid out that day. <laughs> yeah, and no, I'll, be, I'll be needing to get some tips from you, I think. But, uh, <laughs> well, the tips are bet Harry Kane to score when he plays against Arsenal, yeah, which I'm sure that. you know that. I'll take that. But yeah, Jason, um, obviously, um, well, you, you told us, obviously, you, you went to a few games um, a few seasons back. But obviously, um, a lot of your um, passions, I assume you're um, consuming through TV. So I'm sure at home, you watch a lot of Arsenal games at home and also consume a lot of um, kind of food programs and stuff like that at home. And given, yeah. um, given you're a successful chef and restauranter in your own right, and um, you have ended up appearing on TV um, through your career, um, was it always an ambition of um, yours to appear on TV? Or was it something that kind of just happened? So uh, definitely the definition of something that just happened. I remember actually uh, being 13 years old. I, I lived in Sweden and I was going to international school there and they were doing a commercial for Ericsson mobile phones. And I remember these producers just walked into our class. They needed, you know, so when they just looked at me, they go, uh, you're going to do it. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, um, you know, we did it and, that was just kind of this start and, and, and I felt comfortable in that situation. And when we started our food truck, me and my partner, Daniel, um, we, we just then, as we were starting this, the first season of the food truck race, the show that we did was coming out. And we, I remember watching the first episode with him and going, we're going to win this show. 
we're going to do this. And so much so that when literally the Food Network called us out of the blue, they called me and I picked up the phone. They said, we're calling from Food Network Race. I said, you know, what took you so long? And, um, and, and honestly, yeah, there's just um, maybe a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, you, you, you put yourself out there, you make a commitment to, uh, you know, excellence and, and doing things that are the right way. And do, even when it's harder, uh, putting yourself in a spot where you, you know, you really stand behind a, a product and, and, a, and a source of quality. And I think at that point, you know, those opportunities really start to open themselves up for you. And, um, you know, my partner, Daniel, was really a person who's made for television because um, he says, you know, ridiculous things. And they, the reality TV show producers love that. Um, but once you do that, you're kind of in this network now and they, and they just, as they need people for new shows. So I, I've turned down more shows than I've done. Um, and, and I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's TV shows I've done that you guys probably even haven't heard of, but, um, you know, you can't really argue with the TV money. You know, you just, you're never going to get paid better than that. Uh, as a chef. I mean, I did this show with MTV, right? We filmed 21 episodes in eight days and I got paid like a year and a half of my salary for eight days. I'm like, okay, who can turn this down? You know, like, I'm just not me. Um, so yeah, so it was definitely not uh, a goal of mine. Uh, it's kind of just, it's fallen into my lap as, as I've continued to, to go on and things that, um, you know, the, the things that keep being presented in front of me, uh, you know, I guess I keep doing a good enough job that people want to keep hiring me for that. But first and foremost, very much a chef. Um, you know, I love cooking food. That's, that's definitely, well, I, I would love to be a, a football commentator. It would really be the dream goal. I always, every time I say something before they say it, I go, babe, you heard me. I said that, you know, I said it's been nine games without a goal or whatever. And, um, you know, it, that would be really the dream job. But as far as things I can do and produce a living in, cooking is probably the, the best one. Well, it's funny you mentioned the commentary because we, we do a feature on this uh, podcast occasionally where we uh, redo our own version of commentary for <laughs> and out goals. And then we have the guests guess which goal we're commentating over. So next time we have you on, we'll... Oh, we'll I love that game. That sounds that. great. <laughs> a lot of fun. That'd be awesome. um, we have another game um, to, to kind of take that place, I suppose, that we'll, we'll jump into. And um, essentially, yes, yeah, still on the topic of food. Um, that and both Arsenal are very yeah, important things in your life. So kind of curious to know in an ideal situation, if you're sitting down at home to watch Arsenal or, or sports in general, I suppose, but let's say there's an Arsenal game on, do you have a game day set up and um, what would that be? So I've got some kind of like categories and I'm going to see if we can take okay, them off. So, um, so, you know, the issue here being that of course, a lot of our matches 4 30 AM, 7 AM, you know, it, it, they're not exactly times like, I'm setting alarm 657, you know, get out of bed, get in front of the, and the screen. And honestly, I'm not, I'm too nervous a lot of the times to really do anything, mm -hmm. you know, like if, if I'm not working, I'm, I'm definitely smoking before a game. Like I have to, <laughs> to chill. Uh, I was in, I was in Israel uh, with my, with my friends for a wedding, uh, you know, before the world fell apart. And, uh, and we, we, were, we kind of did some acid at the beach. And later that night was a, a game against Eintracht Frankfurt. And that was a very interesting way to watch uh, a Europa League game. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that much. Um, but no, I wouldn't say I have a go-to setup. Uh, I just have to watch the games. And, I, and I, like I said, I don't, I don't miss them. Uh, and I mean, even today, you know, we're running the bagel shop and it's fucking Saturday morning, 9.30 to 11.30 is a very busy time for bagels. And I'm like, you guys good? Cause I'm, I'm out of here. And, uh, and I, and I, you know, I worked until nine 27. I went upstairs, watched the match. I came back down at halftime. Okay. You're good. Great. Back up. Well, I live upstairs. I should mention that. And uh, that's where I usually watch the game. I actually have a little office with the TV and that's just kind of like, you know, where, where I would watch all things considered. I also have like a ridiculous Jersey collection and, and like they're in the stairway from the restaurant up into the apartment. It's like about 130 of them. And, um, you know, my, my one that I'm the most proud of is this, uh, uh, the bruised banana actually match readied for Ian Wright. And, um, that was, that cost me a, you know, fortune. Uh, but, and I wear it too. And, uh, you know, I just, I just fucking love that shirt. And, um, you know, it's, it's always kind of one of those things when you wake up going, okay, which shirt today? Now today I'm wearing, of course, the, uh, ripped raspberry, uh, with a Yang on the back. And that's because, uh, we had a guy today 
his first day as a, as a potential employee and his uh, Instagram was M U F C 1905. Wow. So of course I wore uh, the shirt of the last Arsenal player to score against United uh, on November 1st. Uh, and he showed up in his United t-shirt. I told him that he had to turn it inside out if he wanted to work. Uh, and so he begrudgingly did and was wearing an inside out United shirt all day. <laughs> well, uh, given that this is going to be primarily consumed as a podcast as opposed to, to video, I feel like I can share something on the subject that we've been speaking. You might recognize kind of what this. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, somebody, somebody, I'll, yeah, I'm not going to say too much, but somebody made that. I was very, very, I'll be, I'll, I'll be the one who, uh, who describes, uh, what I do on my off time. You guys can be, you guys can be <laughs> I appreciate that. that. Take I, I don't have an employer that's going to get me in trouble. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> me neither right now, but that's a, that's another story. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, it's funny again that you mentioned, um, cause I guess, yeah, given that we don't really have the, you, you sort of mentioned, yeah, you don't, you don't have time to, to make food and it's kind of early in the day, which I can empathize with. Yeah. Um, but we'll move on to this, this other almost game, I guess. And you'd mentioned the, the, the Jersey collection that you have. So, um, given that this club is, yeah, so near and dear to both of our hearts, so, sorry, Joe, not, not including you in that, but, um, right. Definitely don't include me in that. <laughs> but uh, Jason, as I see on your Instagram and as you were talking about, you're always um, rocking a different Arsenal kit. And I think what you said, is it 130 or so that you have? Yeah. 140? Yeah. So it might be hard. It might be like asking you to pick, you know, like a, a favorite churl or, or something like that. But um, which are your three favorites, if you could narrow okay, it down? So, so of course, well, we talked about the Ian Wright one. Um, I think that my second favorite is, is really a no-brainer. And it, it was unfortunately a pretty uneventful match. Um, but in the 2011-12 season, when we had our 125th year uh, kit, the, ba the badge with the additional filigree, the, the ivy and the oak uh, on the outside, um, we played only one match that season in our yellow. Uh, we played mostly in the red and white. We did have our, our blue kit that year as well. But I have our one kit. The one day we wore that was actually an away, away game, Champions League, AC Milan. I believe we actually lost 4-0. But that was a game that Thierry Henry came back. He played three games with us. He played the Leeds match. He played this Champions League match. And then he played that game away at Sunderland when he scored, he scored at the end there. So that I have that shirt uh, in, you know, the, the nice like Champions League one uh, with Henri number 12 on the back uh, in the uh, in the cup font. Uh, of course, uh, instead of the number 14, because, of course, he played as 12. He always wanted to be 12. Uh, and I guess, uh, was it Grimondi was 12 when he came? Uh, I, 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 yeah. And um, so anyway, so that's probably the second one. And then I would say my third favorite. Oh, it's a no brainer. It's, it's got to be the, the 06 um, home shirt, the Farewell to Highbury shirt. Uh, and I've actually gone and purchased the um, the one that has the uh, the final match, the the Wigan text on right, it. Right. Uh, and so those are my top three favorites. I think that's kind of a no brainer, you know. Um, yeah. uh, I also do. I also did when in in this, uh, December of fifteen when Ozil had uh, sixteen assists and looked like a sure sure thing to break the assist record. And of course, at that moment, really from there. All the way up until Valentine's Day, that game against Leicester, uh, I was sure we were going to win the league. Uh, and so I, I bought a – that was – we had that, that kind of ugly yellow diamond kit. It was like gold diamonds with the blue sleeves. It was, it was kind of gross. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alexis Sanchez scored a hat trick in that kit, uh, the 5-2 game against Leicester. So it was that, that kind of gold and blue. Mm -hmm. I, it doesn't really, doesn't really feel like an Arsenal shirt to me. But I bought that one signed by the whole team with Ozil on the back. And I have that one framed, um, but of course I have it framed on the Arsenal side, not the Ozil side. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and that's because he of course didn't break that record. And of course we didn't win the Premier League, but it, uh, I definitely bought that one prematurely. Well, on a similar note, you mentioned the farewell to Highbury kind of like maroon kit. Yeah. Um, I was at that game, the, the farewell to Highbury when we beat. Wayne. Holy and, um, shit, man. I think that, uh, it, the Who performed afterwards on the field, which was kind of cool. Um, but super cool. Uh, speaking of that jersey in particular, I had a similar faux pas to the Ozil one, although probably worse in the sense that it was summertime and the transfer window was open and I got Patrick Vieira on that kit. <laughs> <laughs> that was the summer he, le he left Arsenal. So I, I can't remember, honestly, if we took it back or what happened. I might still have just this Patrick Vieira kit that he never played in. 
um, sitting you around. Know, I, I made a hair of a faux pas with that same kid as well. I was on eBay and I saw uh, one with Ian Wright's name on the back. And I'm like, was he, he was, he wasn't still on the and I just bought it anyways and it showed up and I'm like, yeah, he hadn't been on the team for a couple of years. I don't know what I was thinking uh, with that one. So I have a, I have an Ian Wright uh, version of that one as well, which I, I don't think I've ever actually worn that one. It's a good conversation starter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why the fuck do you have that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, you know, you got like an Autobayor or, uh, or, you know, a Van Percy or something, you know, I luckily enough oh, don't no. have a Van Percy. I do have a Fabregas shirt. You know, and I, I, I've worn it. I don't really know how I feel about it. The guy brought me so many, so many moments of joy and so many moments of pain. So, you know, it's, it's, it's stuff in the air. And I go both ways with getting players' names on the back, you know, because I want, you know, like I have an Emile Smith Rowe 55 shirt. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's, to me, that's pretty cool. But then again, like he's got his 32 now. Who knows what his first team number will actually be? Who knows yeah. if he'll... I mean, obviously he looks like a real talent. He looks, you know, one of the best players on our team at the moment, mm. but really when you, you know, how do you really sit there and know this person's going to be an Arsenal player for their career? I mean, you know, you have these Martinelli's and all this stuff. You're like, is it going to be, is it, you know, and of course in retrospect, it's easy to look back and say, yeah, I want to go ahead. And, you know, I was watching highlights and I bought an Eduardo shirt. Cause I'm like, yo, fuck, Eduardo was amazing. He was yeah, amazing. And, uh, and I, I know it's kind of one of those things that in the moment, I wasn't really collecting shirts. You know, I didn't really have the money when, when, I was, when I was just in college, like, you know, buying a jersey is like, you know, okay, maybe one every three years. And, uh, and now what I'll do is I'll buy, you know, like the official kit with no name. And then I like buy the fucking DH gate ones with whoever name I want. And that way it's like, you know, if fucking, I'm happy I didn't get a Willie in one because I would have burned it oh, already. <laughs> but, well, maybe that you know, Smith Row one will become a collector's item, the 55. Event. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like a, a 55, a Neil Smith Row, that's a, that's a, a throwback for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, Smith Rowe is sad that he's looking good. But um, I want to talk about my team for a second, Jason. Top yeah, I don't blame that. you. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, we've got to talk about Spurs at some point. And um, it's ironic, I guess, you were um, a dodgy lasagna away from potentially um, supporting my team. And, of course, yeah, it's ironic as well, given you're a chef, that food potentially <laughs> led, to, um, led to the ultimate choice. But uh, what I'm keen to understand is, given, obviously, you're out in California, um, do you, would you say... Would you say you share the same resentment for Spurs as maybe a sort of UK Arsenal fan? And is it is is it the team you sort of dislike the most in the UK? How, what, yeah, what, what are your feelings on the North London derby as a really? sort of US-based supporter? Okay, so great question, right? Um, and of course, I another just another thing that I that I'm constantly complaining about with American sports is that you, there are no legitimate local rivalries. You know, there isn't. So, you know, in, in California, well, the San Francisco Giants and the Dodgers—they really hate each other. It's like, yeah, how many fucking baristas are, are Dodger fans that you have to deal with every day? You know, and of course, you know this 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 uh, the 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 the, clo the proximity of you know the the Merseyside derby, Manchester, you know, North London you have to think that the rivalry is more alive for those of which in the UK. I mean, it's, it's, it's not something you could avoid. I could not wear an Arsenal shirt, go out into the world. And let's be real, man. I don't know how much time you spend in Orange County. I'm not likely to necessarily run into a Tottenham supporter. And, and it's, it's not real. I mean, I, I know like two of them, you know, that's about it, maybe three. So, so it couldn't possibly be the same level of intensity. I think that the team I hate the most of course is United. There's really no way Fair around enough. it. Uh, I, I, I was from, you know, 05 to 08. I was living with the United fan. It was absolute fucking torture. <laughs> this guy, like, didn't even care to wake up and watch the games. The fucking time we beat them at the Emirates with Henri's last-minute header, he didn't even wake. He wasn't even awake yet. You know, it's like I couldn't even – like, he woke up. and I'm like, 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. He's like, whatever. We're still going to win the league, you know. And he was right, you know. So it's like – so it was, it was kind of a nightmare uh, to live with him. He's such a piece of shit, this guy. <laughs> and um and so anyway so united just like they make me sick you know and city like i mean i don't really know how you could be too pumped like it's just it's so clear like they're owned by a state you know like yeah, it's just no, they're, not, they're not like a real team uh you know it's it's it's, it's just like during this period and then and then there'll be some they'll go back probably you know liverpool they've struggled they've kind of gone about it the right way of, of getting a clop and 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 you know i read this thing that they don't buy superstars they make superstars and like when Mane went there i did not see this happening so uh you know of course credit to them for for being able to do that but yeah i mean spurs have only really been 
okay for like five years. You know, I mean, it, it, there was there was a very long period of the time that that they were in the bottom half of the table, and there wasn't really, you know, the importance of a North London derby was really more formality than 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 something in the league. Uh, and of course, now you know it hasn't necessarily been particularly fruitful since Unai Emery's one good game uh, as Arsenal manager. Um, and other than that, I mean, you know, Aubameyang had that incredible opportunity to win it in his first year at Wembley. Uh, when that was one of my favorite goal celebrations, by the way, for Aaron Ramsey. This is oh. my fucking pitch, dude. And oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that was so good. Um, so yeah, so uh, honestly, like recently, of course, the the derbies uh, have been have been a lot more exciting. The, the time leading up to them, you know, there was kind of that 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 thing in 2009. You know, oh, in a derby, form goes out the window, but you know, Arsenal pretty much won all of them. And now, you know, you're in this period where now it's changed. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's funny because because everyone's so quick to say, "Is there been a power shift?" And honestly, like, I don't think that without silverware. There can be. I mean, we've won two trophies in this period that you guys have been good and you've won none. Like, it's been our worst period. It's been your best period. And, and you know, we, we obviously have more to show for it. And um, for me, that's that type of thing where, where it still isn't as much. You guys win the league, that, that you know, my, my, my hatred might change. You know, you, you, you did the thing that would have accelerated as much as possible. You hired the devil. You know, you hired the, the, the worst human being on the planet, as far as I'm concerned, after <laughs> Donald Trump, um, that, that, you know, Jose Mourinho, just, he's just an unbearable cunt. And, um, and you know, there, I, I was sitting there looking at it going, he's either going to be our manager or their manager. Like, there was no good scenario. And I, I kept saying this before he went to United. I said, you know, this might actually not be a bad thing because we used to lose to United and Mourinho. But now that's only six points instead of 12, you know, like now that's not two separate things. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and of course, since then we've, 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 you know, been pretty good against Chelsea. So anyway, I, I obviously hate Spurs. Uh, I, 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 the moments I love, um, of course, the Saul Campbell story, oh, you know, one of my favorites. Yeah. That's not, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very heavily tattooed Joe. And I, and I will tattoo my butt and I will have the uh, fastest road to Europe ad the Nike, uh, down the Seven Sisters Road oh, over good. there. I don't know if you know which one I'm talking about, but search Nike, the fastest route to Europe, and it's a map from Tottenham Hotspur to Arsenal. Uh, and and I will get that tattooed, so you can rest assured if we ever meet in person, oh, uh, I'll good. probably I'll probably be pulling down my pants and showing you my right cheek. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, so no, of course um, we we would definitely like to to finish above you. Um, again, you know, I, it's hard to say that would necessarily happen this year. Some pretty unbelievable stuff would have to occur. I mean, it's not just us getting those points. It's all these people between us also dropping. And, uh, I mean, we might, we might get fortunate and Villa could go on a little bit of a, of a, a bad run here with their, uh, co-Villa, uh, kids. So, you know, you never know, of course. And, and I think we've, we've been in situations before at this period, I think in 2009, Hull were in first place at this time of the season. And, uh, and then I think they got relegated or, or, uh, we're at least close enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At least, at least close enough, you know? So, um, it doesn't, you know, we, we, we can only, you know, you can only beat what's in front of you. We got palace and Newcastle again as our next two matches on form on paper. You'd like to think that we could get something out of those. Let's see what happens. But I, 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 I think that we, we would like to finish in a European spot. The club would, However, I, I think that I, I would prefer to, to, to really be in a spot where next year we were, we were playing significantly less games uh, and maybe no European distraction, uh, which, of course, I understand that the financial ramifications of not being involved in European football. But, um, you know, you look at these teams like Leicester when they won the league, like Chelsea when they won the league after finishing 11th place, yeah. sometimes playing 38 games with a small squad where, you know, that Chelsea team, that Leicester team, we could probably right now both recall – those 11s, you know, they were just, they were so consistent, the, the teams and, and, and Arsenal, it's been, you know, every, every game, uh, multiple changes. And, and in my opinion, a lot of times the wrong ones. Um, so, so we'll see. I don't really have any expectations for the season. Uh, I would just, you know, like to not get relegated after, <laughs> after what was, you know, looked certainly fucking dire uh, a week ago, uh, two weeks ago, you know, just, it was hard to see where a win was coming from. It was hard to see what, collection of players could do anything together it was hard to see who cared i mean Aubameyang just hasn't looked himself since he signed his contract which of course 
you know, when are we going to learn our lesson? I, w- I would have been, I was the first to admit, I would have been devastated if he didn't resign. But when you look at what we're paying Ozil, and I mean, even to a certain extent, what, what uh, United paid Sanchez and all this stuff, I mean, giving people contracts 29, 30, it's just, it's not the most fruitful decision. And, um, you know, he, he hasn't made it look like a good one. Well, on the note of, I guess, um, the personnel at the club, like Aubameyang and their contract situations, and there's going to be a few probably changes, even this month, given that the January transfer window's open, probably going to be trying to get rid of a couple of these fringe guys. But I guess, considering that the alternatives to them are these youthful players coming through, and they've been the ones to kind of win us a few points recently, Saka, Martinelli, Smith Rowe, what do you make of the future of this Arsenal under Arteta, where he seemingly now is willing to put a little bit more faith in the youth and distance himself. Although today it was disappointing to see Willian start. Looks like he's beginning to distance himself from some of these guys who just let us down for too long. I mean, you really, you really got to sit there and think that, that Willian walks off and Arteta looks at him and goes, yo, I can't fucking help you at a certain point. You know, you, I, I, you really sit there and go, dude, you're doing nothing. You're doing the opposite of something. You know, you're, you're, you're not just, you're not even just a passenger. You're literally, giving the ball back. He made like seven mistakes today. And, um, and, and, you know, you do have to think that, that it was only because it was a cup game that it, you do have to play some sort of week inside. I mean, I know we're back at it on Thursday and then we're back again on the weekend. So I can, I, I see why, I mean, you know, these players have to actually get some minutes. Tierney can't play every match. I mean, the guy looks amazing. He can't play every match. Saka can't play every match. I understand they're young. I understand they're fit. But, um, you know, we, we do have to rotate. And unfortunately, our, rot- our rotation players simply aren't good enough. Yeah, as you mentioned, I guess, given that I think probably you and I and most Arsenal fans would feel quite strongly, quite deeply that the, the Champions League is kind of like our spiritual home. And that sort of like should be the height that we should be eventually striving towards sooner rather than later. W- where do you see Arsenal's stock in, in relation to the glory days? Are we ki- is that wishful thinking on our behalf? Um, or are we kind of in, uh, correct to be kind of throwing our hat into the ring, thinking that we should be a Champions League club? Um, it's a great question. Really good question. Uh, I, I, you know, you sit there and you think to yourself, you know, 22 years in a row uh, of, of, you know, taking place in that competition, you know, that, that, that does make you feel like uh, we, we probably do belong there. I imagine there are some, uh, you know, teams that, that maybe they'll get matched up against like a Leicester in the Champions League, Atletico Madrid, Leicester, and you know, sit there maybe going, you know, maybe we wish we had a more historic name on the on the on the shirt, you know, a badge. I think I think it's nice to show that there is a little bit more parity, that there are teams that are, are are fluctuating a little bit more, that it's not so automatic that these are the top four good teams. Um, and obviously, you know, I hate this idea of a Super League because I love the merit-based race for the additional inclusion. And, you know, let's remember that our last, uh, our last runs in the Champions League were, were pretty painful. I mean, 10-2 on aggregate to Bayern Munich, uh, which, I mean, you guys know something about as well, Joe. Um, True. Uh, that was, oh, that was just one match, actually. Sorry, just one match that you guys uh, led in almost the same amount of goals. Uh, of course, from Serge Gnabry. Uh, Arsenal rejects Serge Gnabry uh, to go and, uh, and do that to you. And then, of course, the additional London is red tweet afterwards was particularly sweet. Um, but... <laughs> I obviously don't think that just because of our name, we are guaranteed a Champions League spot. I think that, of course, it has to be earned. Um, I think that we're not Champions League quality, you know, at all. And I think that if we were in there, I I don't think we'd make it out of the group. Uh, And I think that being in that competition before you're ready for it uh, is really only barely uh, an advantage. I mean, it's really only better in the sense that we could potentially attract some players that have just to deem themselves Champions League quality, you know, to players that, you know, Mbappe is not coming, you know, if we're, if we're not in it, uh, not, not that I really believe he ever would, although I do think it's his destiny to fulfill the footsteps of Thierry Henry. Um, but, but either way, I, I think obviously that we need to get back into it, but we really need it more for the money and the ability to buy players that are that quality. Uh, we do not need to be involved on a sporting front. I mean, we're not, we're not good enough to, to be competing uh, and I don't think it would be helpful at the moment. I think it's probably better to let the youth players in the Europa League really shine. I mean, you know, um, I think we're the only team that that got 18 points out of our group. And, uh, and you know, we really got to see some stars or some, some kids become stars in the last two, three years uh, through that competition. And if we're just being super honest, that's, the, that's a lot closer to our quality uh, at the moment. 
And, um, you know, with Arteta, uh, I think the board has showed us that, that he's not going away. And um, if he's not going away, you know, which, which I, I if, if they say we've seen things with this guy, we want to build a culture. Our, our job is we don't want a merry-go-round of, of managers. We want an identity. We, we believe in this guy. We are going to back him. We're not going to sack him unless we get relegated. You know, that's okay with me. We just, the club needs to actually fucking say that. Like they need to come out and say, this is what we're believing in. They cannot come out when we're in the middle of four home defeats and go, we're happy. Mm -hmm. Arteta is doing a beautiful job. And of course, that's where I'm going crazy is seeing is seeing that type of stuff not condemned. I just want a little bit more of an open relationship with the club and the fans of fireside chats, if you will, to just talk about like that we do actually have a plan. Um, I'm not sure he's the person to, to really lead us and take us forward. Um, I'm pretty sure he's the best candidate that is available right now. I mean, you hear all these things about Nagelsmann and and Ralph Ragnarick and all these, these, these people. And, you know, I don't necessarily know enough about them to say uh, that they'd be better. You know, I, you hear that they've done great things with, you know, Leipzig and, and stuff like that. But, um, you know, German, Germany is quite a bit different. I mean, we saw today Schalke, uh, you know, they won their first game and since January of 2020, all because of the, the magic that was uh, Sead Kolasinac, uh, <laughs> who, couldn't, who couldn't buy a minute uh, in the Arsenal game. And uh, maybe that right away shows that, uh, that Germany's not a place that we can kind of one for one uh, replace managers and, and they'll be, have success. I think that's a, a fair point. Um, funnily enough, Schalke are managed by Christian Gross now, who was a manager of Tottenham about 25 years ago and we were absolutely <laughs> terrible. But um, yeah, that's a weird coincidence too. But I've got one final question. It's obviously, forget football, it's a crazy year, but it's also a crazy season in the Premier League. It feels very open. So, Jason, what we want to know is, what is your prediction for where Arsenal are going to finish this season? Say seventh. That's what fun. I said that, actually. I yeah, mean, I was like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, what yeah. Did, and, and you said for Spurs? I said... So bear in mind, I think this was after the City game. Or I said third, which I felt. Really? I think I still stand by that. I think that I, I want higher, but I think that's fair, maybe. And, and who would be one and two in that scenario? I personally think Liverpool won City two, is my. Yeah, I, I mean, the, you, the run that United are on right now does not look sustainable. They don't no. really look like a good team. I mean, I just, don't believe the hype for sure. No. Yeah. And, and I mean, anyone who can lose 6 1 to Spurs is like, you know, not <laughs> exactly, not exactly. Quality. <laughs> not quality. And even, I mean, even, they even they lost to you. I mean, they yeah, lost to yeah. Arsenal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, um, no, it's, it is quite funny when we have guests who walk in uh, with, with other Premier League clubs. Uh, you know, when they come to the bagel shop, which is really the only place we're doing any uh, any business, we only allow two guests in at a time. So I'll warn people when we're coming in that we're going to boo the next guest, and then they'll open the door with a Liverpool shirt and go boo, you know, the whole time. And um, and a guy walks in and he's got a United shirt. And I go, you know, sir, this is an Arsenal bagel shop. However, we do only let teams uh, who have lost to Arsenal represent their own colors this season. So uh, he was he was able to wear his United shirt in there on that on that pretense. Well, I think uh, piling the misery on Man United is is a good place to to leave it for today. So well, they, they're playing right now, right? They're 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 playing against Watford at the moment. I don't know uh, what's uh, what's going on in that game. They got to be beating Watford. Yeah, it's one nil Watford. In I'm sorry, one nil United is a McTominay fifth oh. minute goal. Uh, um, well, they they yeah. might come out on top in the in the Ashley Young Derby uh, game between <laughs> Watford and and Manchester United. But yeah, we'll we'll wrap up Wait, today, kind of. Is he at Watford right now? I thought he was at Inter. Oh, that was his like OG where he started. Oh, and then he, okay. he, he, you're right though. He is at Inter along with um, another Manchester United and Arsenal reject, Alexis Santos. Alexis Santos, Santos yeah. Um, Who of another... course only scored against us when he played for United in the yeah. FA Cup. It had to happen. It had to happen. Yeah. All that really remains to be said today is a, is a thank you to my co-host Joe. And then um, a special thank you, extra special thank you to Jason Quinn. It was uh, yeah, a lot of fun having you on the pod. Always great speaking with a with a fellow gooner, but um, but both of us have enjoyed it despite the the, the rift between Spurs and Arsenal. We, we don't <laughs> that on we the Joe, Joe took it like a champion. He took it like a champion. Oh yeah, I had inside. Not I was great. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all good um, but yeah, okay, Jason, well, hope you enjoyed being our guest. Thanks so much, guys. It was a blast. Uh, absolutely love it. Uh, I'll subscribe and uh, look forward to uh, playing that other game the next time. All right.
Yeah, no, we look forward to it as well. Before we do let you go, though, how can our listeners follow you and keep up to date with all things Playground, DTSA, and Dough Exchange? Yeah, so um, uh, we are uh, are really quite active on uh, on Instagram, basically, is, is really the best way to get a hold of us. Uh, I personally run both of our uh, accounts. You know, I think you can... Uh, probably say that i was replying to you almost immediately i'm an absolute yeah, that's how i got a hold of you yeah i love the sound of my own voice i'm happy to sit here and feel important and just uh and, and just kind of talk um but yeah playground dtsa is really my handle for uh everything if you want to reach me and then dough exchange of course is for the bagel shop um at playground at the moment really the only thing we're doing uh, believe it or not we're actually following the rules uh for restaurants so we're just doing takeout uh, we do these uh, kind of themed meals basically every three weeks. We kind of choose a new cuisine and we do like an $80 meal for two and like a $150 meal for four. And that's about your only decision. If you want the small one or the big one, you show up, you grab it, you go home, you open it up. It all kind of eats well together. Uh, and then, of course, at the bagel shop, we're open Friday through Sunday. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a 34 year old self-loathing Jew and I've, I've personally never had uh, better bagels uh, than the ones that we're producing. But. I guess the caveat there is I've really made them to my taste. So of course they're probably my favorite, uh, but we make some killer sandwiches and we kind of have this uh, good vibes guaranteed situation when you come, it's really quite a blast. Uh, if you, if you come visit us at the bagel shop, which is called dough exchange and that's uh, the Instagram handle as well, just uh, dough exchange, no uh, spaces, the way it's spelled. And um, guys, once again, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it was an absolute blast. Uh, come on you gunners. Yeah. Come on you gunners. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get, an echo of that from joe but yeah thanks again jason as for our listeners if you enjoyed uh, listening to this yeah make sure to follow us on twitter instagram and facebook that's at united mates fp to listen to more of the podcast and to check out some more of our other content too you can also watch these podcast recordings on youtube follow united mates football podcast i mentioned at the uh, beginning that it's been a little while since we've had some featured music on the podcast but it's a new year and we're going to try to bring you more music than ever before so Today's song, Insomnia, comes from a brilliant young artist based out of L.A., and I'm going to let them take it away. Hey, this is Earth to Eve, and you're listening to the United Mates Football Podcast. If I never close my eyes, then it can't be morning time. Oh, fuck. Will someone please pinch me? The air is glowing with crystal Feel it.